The magician's broken. I'll answer the door. And Alexander called, hearing the doorbell go off. He walked to the front door and opened it. Are you Lance Alexander? said a seedy looking man at the door. Yes, but, Lance said, only stopping because he was shot and the man ran away. Lance's father, also called Lance Alexander, came running to the door. What happened, Junior? Are you alright? Junior asked. I was shot, but I'm alright, said Junior. He was playing tougher than he was. I think he was looking for you. Stop playing the hero, boy, said his worried father, who was looking for the shooter. Junior collapsed on the doorstep. Senior picked up his bleeding son and teleported him to the local hospital's emergency waiting room, running to the reception desk. With his bleeding now unconscious son, my son needs help, said Senior Pant. Hello, you need to sign this form, said Jack Taylor on orderly, who was filling in for a friend in the reception. Jack, my dad, he's his doctor, said Senior, who knew Jack, who worked with his dad. I'll do your paperwork, said Senior. I will. He looks bad. Wonder if he'll die, said Jack. Senior carried Junior to a chair and sat him down. Granddad will help us, said Senior. As he filled in a form, with the penny hat on him, as he tried not to cry. Not long later in the morgue. Dr. Death, said Jack to the coroner. What is it, Jack? Who died now? moaned the coroner. You were needed. Come with me. Said Jack. Not wanting to be the one to tell the doctor his grandson was in hospital as a patient. Can't someone else deal with it? I'm busy. My doctor death. He was fed up with being used for telling families they lost a patient. It's important, said Jack. New deal of it, moaned the coroner. I am. That's why I'm here, said Jack. Give me the paperwork, sighed the doctor, giving him. I don't have it, said Jack. No paperwork? How am I supposed to help then? Said the doctor shortly. It's being done now. I came as quick as I could, said Jack. What do you want me to do? Hold your hand? Snapped Dr. Death. No, shouted Jack. What do you want me for, snapped Dr. Diff impatiently. Blake, come with me, and you'll find out, grumbled Jack. I give in, snapped Dr. Diff. Jack took Blake to the emergency waiting room, which was empty. Jack went to see. The doctor, he put in his place, subbing as the receptionist. Dr. Hart, where is the shooting victim? Jack asked the cardiologist, who wasn't called Hart either. Room B4, where his father, said the cardiologist. A shooting, did he die? asked Blake. Your patient is in room B4. Go to him, said Jack, not wanting to see Blake's face when he saw his patient. He's my patient now, said Blake, storming off to see his patient. 
outside room B4, he heard the sound of a man crying. He thought it must be the father of the victim crying over his son. When he opened the door, he was broken and shocked. He was right. It was the father. Oh my God, Lancelot. What happened? Is anyone looking after him? cried the doctor. Dad, said the senior. Raising his head, tears running down his face, crystallising in his lap as sapphires. Senior got up and hugged his dad. Yes, Dr. Kelly. He just left to organise an operation, said Senior. Good. What happened, boy? said Blake. It should have been me there, said the distraught father. Why? Blake asked. Junior was visiting me at my house. And he answered the front door for me. And someone shot him and ran away, said Senior through his tears. I see someone found out who the necromancer is and tried to kill him, said Blake, trying to be strong enough to help them, putting a wall between the situation and him. He knew if he didn't, he'd be less than useless. If I were you, I'd be hunting down the shooter, said Blake. Not like this, said the crying mess, which was senior. No, not you, said Blake. Buck up, I'll see he's looked after. The shooter can't be found alive, or you and I will be caught, and Gabriel will be the emperor of the solar system, and the universe will fall into anarchy. And you and I will be grim reapers in the afterlife, watching it all fall apart. Honestly, not looking forward to that. I'll try, said Senior, sniffing. You look after him, Dad. Senior looked at his son. For you, said Senior, and teleported away. Moments later, and Senior appeared in a strange place, a pocket universe, out of time. I've been expecting to see you for a while now, said Senior's brother, Tempest, the Lord of Time. Hello, Temp, said Senior, who was trying to suppress his fatherly side with his rage and want for revenge. I have the shooter in the pool of time. You can see him, said Tempus, hugging his brother. Thank you, I need that hug, said Lance. They walked over to a glowing pond of water, which was the pool of time. You sit in the chair, said Tempus, of the only chair in the place, where he usually sat, watching time go by in the pool of time. Lance sat in the chair. Thank you, said Lance. Look in the pool of time. It is where he saw your face. You need to go back and kill him then. And time will change. And Junior won't be shot and die of his wounds, said Tempest. Singy looked shocked. I said... He won't die, said Tempus. I remember that place. I killed a hitman. He killed a child there, man said, seeing himself unmasking him as a necromancer. The killer of really bad people. He saw himself disappear, and a man with a phone camera in his hand walked to where he was. Got you, said the man with the camera. No, I got you, said Lance. The door over there. We'll take you to the time he's in.
to jump your spawning at a door. Lance got up. His clothes melted from a blood stained blue suit to a pristine clean black shirt with black pants and a mask. The belt turned into a sword belt with a great sword hanging off it. Go now, said Tempus. Lance gingerly opened the door and walked in it, reappearing at the scene in the pool of time. It was the past. Got you, said the shooter. Don't count your chickens, said Lance, walking up to the shooter, pulling out his sword. I have you, said the shooter. You shot the wrong man, Will shoot. I am here to stop you, said Lance. Give me that phone. That won't stop him. He remembers you. Said a disembodied voice. What was that? Asked the shooter. Okay, said Lance. Why do you want to kill me? You just killed my mate, said the shooter. You murdered my son, said Lance. So I came to the past to save him. What are you? Ask the shooter. Your killer, said Lance, waving his sword, cutting off the head of his son's killer. Don't forget the phone, Lance. Tempus's voice said from nowhere. Thanks, Temp, said Lance, picking up the camera phone, looking at the picture and said, Not a bad picture of me. Come back to me, Junior. He's safe. And with me. He's waiting to see you, said Tempus. A portal appeared in the alley. Lance stepped in and disappeared. 